All right. Good morning. I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. Good to have you with us here today for the Congregation of Prayer, a guide for daily meditation and prayer around God's Word. It's Monday, May 16th, 2022. And we'll actually begin today some catechesis um, on uh, or from the Gospel according to St. Luke. This is, uh, well, we left off with Luke Volume 2, the beginning of Luke Volume 2. That was Acts Chapter 3 last week. Um, and now we're going to, for the New Testament half of the year, which we do beginning at, towards the end of the school year and into the summer, look at the Gospel according to Luke. All right, so we'll go back to Luke Chapter 3. We already heard the birth story. Of course, we hear that every Christmas. So we'll begin with his ministry. All right. Well, let's get it up on the screen. There we go. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, we have a new memory verse for the week. Let's say it together. Continue in the faith. We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Acts 14, verses 22 well, verse 22b. Again, continue in the faith. We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Acts 14, verse 22. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 98. This was our intro at Psalm from Sunday. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together. Before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Make a joyful noise. Sing praises. Right? Yesterday being Cantate Sunday. Good. Uh, for our first reading, we're going to actually be reading through the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, chapter 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanities of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man from his lab all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away, and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises, and the sun goes down, and hastens to the place where it rose. The wind goes toward the south, and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually, and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Men cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, See, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. 
There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come, but those who will come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the sons of man, by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed all is vanity and grasping for the wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. I communed with my heart, saying, Look, I have attained greatness, and I have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. This is commonly understood as um, the elder Solomon um, having attained much wisdom by the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? as promised to him by God. Now he sees and he knows more um, than he would have liked to have known. I think this is a, uh, a common concern of those um, who seek wisdom, or not a common concern, a common complaint of those who have sought wisdom, um, that they wish they did not know what they now know. Um, and I think it's also the reason why many do not seek wisdom is because they fear that which they do not know. They fear the knowledge of what they don't know because it may change their perception of the way things are. Right? Um, so this is one of the reasons why, especially those who um, use knowledge or wisdom as a means of power and control, um, which is all those who seek power and control, you do so by, by knowledge, um, why they will threaten you um, when you are pursuing wisdom, right? So they'll say, uh, that's a conspiracy theory, right? How dare you go and see how people conspire? Well, they don't want you to know because knowing, uh, as they say, is half the battle, right? Um, but there is also, uh, they're playing off your better instincts because you actually don't want to know about um, the things that are done in darkness, for example, that which is done um, behind closed doors, the secret dealings of, of men, right? You don't want to know, because if you knew, um, you fear what that might mean for you, right? Um, certainly, as you find out how of those in authority over you um, often betray your trust, right? And use your trust in them, um, actually, for their own self-gain. So, uh, I sympathize with uh, Solomon. The more I know, the m- more I kind of wish I didn't know, <laughs> right? Knowledge increases sorrow, and with with much, in much wisdom is much grief, right? Um, but I think the other aspect too is that those who seek, you know, to uh, attain to great wisdom recognize that it's it's folly. It doesn't really accomplish that for which it proposes uh, to do, right? Which is to bring about a great humanitarian um, revival, a um, what you want to say, a great awakening or a. a transcendent of transcendence of, of man over nature or something like that it just doesn't work it never has which is not the purpose of wisdom of course um, wisdom is to know what god has given all right but there'll be more on that as we read through ecclesiastes and now our catechesis begins in the gospel according to saint luke and we'll be doing this oh for a good part of the summer i want to say Let's see, we're going to go Luke chapter um, all the way through until, actually, we're going to do it all summer, Uh except for the very last week of summer, uh, right before school begins, um, we'll be hearing some Old Testament text for one week that we haven't heard yet. All right, from Ezra, we'll go to to the minor prophet Ezra. All right. So we're going to just work our way through the gospel according to Luke for the rest of the academic year here and summer. Luke 3. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Eturia in the region of Traconitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, while Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, 
the word of God came to John the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, Brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children of Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none, and he who has food, let him do likewise. Then the tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? So he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. Now as the people were in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And with many other exhortations he preached to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being rebuked by him concerning Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, also added this, above all, that he shut John up in prison. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized, and while he prayed, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about thirty years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jana, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathiah, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maath, the son of Mattathiah, the son of Shammai, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joannas, the son of Reshi, Resa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Chaltiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kasim, the son of Elmodom, the son of Ur, the son of Jos, the son of Eleazar, the son of Jorim, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Menon, the son of Madatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashan, the son of Aminadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Roy, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Kainan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Kainan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. All right, very good. So, uh, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, I'm not going to do too much catechesis here at the beginning, but a a few things to note. Um, Let's see, beginning, we have these historic notes, right? So we can place the beginning of John's ministry and consequently Jesus' ministry very specifically in time and place, right? Place, of course, is by the Jordan, um, but time, during the reign, 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, very precise, Pontius Pilate, mm -hmm. Herod being Tetrarch in Galilee, his brother Philip in Eturia, 
in the region of Traconius, Licinius, Tetrarch of Abilene, with Annas and Caiaphas, a su subsequent high priest. Right? They don't have one, only one high priest at a time, but it, um, I think the uh, Luke is su suggesting that uh, they kept trading responsibility back and forth, father and son. All right. Um, and then we have, of course, John, the son of Zechariah. And what's he doing? He's baptizing, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. All right. Now that's interesting because the end of the gospel, I would suggest, is the beginning of the book of Acts with Pentecost. And when they ask uh, St. Peter, brothers, what shall we do to be saved? He says, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name um, um, for the remission of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you notice the end of the book begins or ends the way that it begins with the gospel according to St. Luke. Huh. That's not a coincidence. John's preaching, Peter's preaching, synonymous, right? One baptism for the remission of sins, as we say in the Creed. Of course, um, the prophet Isaiah actually contradicts, well, not exactly what uh, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, right? Where he said, scroll back up to that, um, that you can't make that which is crooked straight. Where did he say that? Oh yeah, it's right here. Verse 15. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. Unless, right, this is this is the futility of man's efforts. Um, but here, Isaiah's prophesying the work of God's word, right, being preached by John in the wilderness, which does make paths straight, right, which does make those crooked places made straight and the rough places smooth. Isn't that interesting, right? So that which is crooked can be made straight, but not by our own effort or strength, but by the work of the Holy Spirit working through the word. All right. And then you notice that question that was asked to Peter at Pentecost is asked at the beginning of the story of John. What shall we do then? What shall we do? Right. And uh, rather than simply be baptized, he's talking about the amendment of life, right? These are the fruits in keeping with repentance. Depending on your vocation, uh, to repent is to turn away from one sin, right? So he, he addresses the people, he answers the tax collectors, he answers the soldiers, right? What shall we do? And they notice the vocationally, the way that sin is made manifest in their life is 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 distinct. All right, and then John prophesies of <laughs> Pentecost. There's too many coincidences here, right? Uh, I baptize you with water, but one mightier is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loose. Referring to Jesus being the Redeemer, Savior, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There's Pentecost, right? Um, and then Pentecost 17 is actually a pro prophetic prophetically fulfilled at Pentecost when he gathers the wheat into the barns, into the church, and 3,000 souls are baptized, right? Uh, and then we find out John gets thrown into prison. Of course, we know. And we'll hear more about that later. Uh, not in Luke's gospel, though. No, that's John where, where the story is. All right, then, to our focus for today, Jesus. When all the people were baptized, right, Jesus also was baptized. Uh, not a lot of details given by by Luke, much more given by St. Matthew, right? Um, what did Jesus do at his baptism? It says here that he prayed, right? And then the heaven was opened. And then we have the visible sign attached to baptism, which is the water for us. But of course, here we have the Spirit descending, Holy Spirit descending bod bodily, um, in a bodily form as a, of a dove, right? Now that's connecting us the water to the Noah story, right? With the dove there is a sign of peace. So uh, this is the gospel writers. These these are their ways. Well, I mean, it's it's God revealing to us that when we see baptism, we are to think of the flood. We're to think about the story of the flood and God's deliverance of Noah and his family, right? Which Luther does with his flood prayer, which we pray every baptism. All right. How was the uh, father present? Uh, in the voice from heaven, right? You are my beloved son, which necessarily means then it's the father speaking. In you, I am well pleased. Why? Because he goes, he's going about the work that he's been given to do, which is to take upon uh, himself the sins of the world from those waters, to carry those sins to the cross and to die for, for them, to free us from them. Uh, we'll hear this voice again. You are my beloved son. Same words. Um, in you, I am well pleased, uh, with an addition at the Mount of Transfiguration, right? Luke 9, um, 
in whom I am well pleased, listen to him. Right? Listen to him. All right, at what age did Jesus begin his ministry, according to Luke here? At about 30 years of age, right? All right, so we have the time stamp earlier with all of the reigns of the various Herod and Pet, uh, Pontius Pilate, etc., and then uh, Tiberius Caesar, uh, and then we have Jesus' age. So that's how you end up with um, with the dating of A.D. and um, B.C., right? Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. We live in the year of our Lord. Um, the beginning of the genealogy is curious. Now, uh, Matthew's genealogy begins the book. Luke's comes here at the ministry of Jesus, and it's used um, in the context of Jesus' baptism. So it's a very different kind of context. But it, we have, you are my beloved son. And then in order to demonstrate that Jesus is the son of God, um, Luke gives us a very unique genealogy. right? And it begins with, as was supposed, the son of Joseph. Of course, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. People mistakenly thought that Jesus was the son of Joseph, but he is one um, who is conceived of the virgin, right? Luke reveals the answer here at the very end, the son of God. Even Adam has to acknowledge that his life comes from God. Um, Pastor Riley and I were talking about this on the Banned Books podcast from um, that's currently posted, 251, episode 251, as we were reading um, this lovely book from Johann Georg, Georg Hamann, um, and talking about how a lot of times our conception of pro-life, uh, as pro-life people, uh, we don't really say it quite as accurately as we ought to. Um, all life, not just from conception, but all the way through labor, delivery, um, and then actually each and every day, as we heard in the sermon yesterday, everything needed for body and life from our conception all the way through to our earthly death and to our resurrection and the eternal life we have, all of it is a gift from God and it's all God's doing, right? So um, the psalmist will say that that uh, you knit me together in my mother's womb, right? For example, this is why the pro-life argument often is a little bit, uh, takes on too much of the of the secular kind of conversation about about choices, um, no one chooses um, to to conceive. Um, despite the fact that we have all of the uh, so-called birth control, um, amazingly, birth still breaks out even where you wouldn't expect it, right? And given to people um, who are barren, that's one of the big stories in the Bible, isn't it? Right. Um, so the, the the question is more: Are we going to get in the way of God bringing about life when and where He wills? right? Um, and, and taking care of us? Are we going to try to um, make this a deal, a transaction, as we heard in the sermon yesterday? Or are we simply going to receive life um, as he gives it, right? And I think that's the better question. Um, and that's what it means truly to be pro-life, is to receive all life that God gives, whether we like it, or whether we appreciate it, whether it's according to our time and according to our schedule, right? That's what it means to be truly pro-life. Um, and unfortunately, we don't often use that um, line of thinking. We think of, um, you know, conceiving even as our voluntary action. <laughs> of course, there's some voluntary action involved, uh, but the life is given when where God wills and according to his doing. All right. And it's the same here. Life comes from God. And Jesus, of course, is conceived by the Holy Spirit, not through the, how does Paul say it? Not by the will of man, but by the will of God, right? Um, and there's a theological point, a really significant one, that uh, will come to play not only with being a child of God in baptism, as we are seeing here, but also, as we'll see tomorrow in the temptation in the wilderness, is that we have this, uh, in Luke we have, especially, we have this theme of reversal, right? That's why I pointed out that there's so many common elements here at the beginning of the book with the beginning of the book of Acts, which is really the, the bookend. So also, we have, working our way back to Adam, we see Jesus being reversing and giving life back to Adam, back to man, as he first gave Adam at the beginning. So we have, you know, everything being reversed, um, death leading back to life now, rather than life leading to death, for example. Um, there's some interesting names from Joseph to David that are different than in Matthew's genealogy here in Luke. And this is this is um, unique. 
All right, if you compare those two genealogies, what you're going to find is that Mary is also of the, of the line and lineage of David. They're both of the house of David. Um, and we have some, up to David, we have some of Mary's ancestors mentioned. Uh, so you're supposed to trace it through your father, but Luke kind of undermines that by tracing it, uh, yes, through the father, kind of, but also mentioning some of um, Mary's ancestors. So he doesn't quite get the genealogy perfect, all right? But there's a theological point being made there, which is to emphasize the virgin birth. Okay. Luke focuses our attention on Jesus as the last Adam who has come to please the Lord for us because our father Adam did not. The brief baptism account is intended to confess that Jesus has joined himself to our humanity by entering the waters of baptism with all the people. Those who have been baptized into the name of Jesus are thought to be sons of their father Adam, but have been declared to be sons of God for the sake of Christ, who has come in in the flesh to please his father for us men and for our salvation. It is at Jesus' request of his father that heaven is opened in holy baptism. The Spirit of God is given through the washing of water and the word, and the Father confesses before all men that he is pleased with us for the sake of Christ. All right. Our catechism for this week is uh, moving along to employers and supervisors and also to youth. So we'll say those. Masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. Ephesians 6, verse 9. All right. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud, excuse me, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. 1 Peter 5, verses 5 through 6. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have given us great responsibilities and uh, authority as employers and supervisors of others. Teach us by your grace and mercy to treat our workers and those who are under us with respect, understanding, and compassion. Give us a humble spirit toward them and help us to see our workers as gifts of God who depend upon us for their livelihood and who enable us to be of greater service to others for whom we perform our life's work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, as you in humility and faith submitted yourself to Mary and Joseph, and to every authority instituted among men for our salvation, teach us to submit to our elders and to believe that you will accomplish your good purposes in our lives and in the lives of others through such honor and respect. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, very good. Our hymn actually will help us uh, prepare for next Sunday, which is Rogate, the Sunday of Christian Prayer. Uh, we won't be singing this on Sunday, but of course, it's one of the many hymns we could have we could sing on Sunday. We'll do that now.
All right, let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray today for faith to live in the promises of holy baptism, for vocations and daily work, for the unemployed, for the salvation and well-being of our neighbors, for our schools, our homeschools, our colleges and seminaries, and for good government and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We rejoice with those who yesterday celebrated their baptism, Jennifer and Peyton, and today, Eric. We also pray with Jerry and Marla, who today celebrate their anniversary. We pray for the congregation, excuse me, the families of our church, especially that of Jack, Michael, Walton, Ruth, Ashley, Paul, Kevin, and family. We pray for those ill, receiving treatment, or recovering, especially Marcella, Bev, Kelsey, Amanda, Dan, Timothy, Merlin, and Jim, and Mike, our homebound Bev, Willis, Ed, Mickey, and Paul, the missions and mercy work of the church, especially the work of Lutherans for Life. We ask for the preservation and increase of hope among us, we pray for those grieving, especially uh, the family of Dale Pfeiffer. For all this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And again, yes, it's good to be with you all, gathered together as a people of God, uh, to hear and to pray and to uh, confess together and to sing. Uh, I haven't acknowledged you yet, so Vicki, who's on uh, YouTube watching on from the road, uh, Gus and Eileen, Don and Karen, Karen as well, um, Grace on YouTube, Tim, oh, she's Grace is also on Facebook, uh, my Aunt Nancy there, and you're welcome, Don, it's good to have you. All right, so, uh, yep, yeah, that's it for today, you can join us again tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., we'll look at the temptation of our Lord, uh, it'll take us a little bit longer, but we'll get through it, all right, 
Blessings to you all, and we'll see you again tomorrow.